hey folks, my name is Michael. I'll be talking about the challenges of managing microservices at scale. Uh, so it's really hard to condense like quarters worth of effort in like about five minutes. So please do reach out to me at Michael uh, after the presentation for any questions. Uh, I won't be deep diving into implementation, but we'll be sharing some of the learnings uh, from managing thousand plus services at Twitter. It must be not a surprise, but that Twitter used to run the largest Ruby on Rails installation for the longest time. Uh, it was aptly called the monorail, and given that routing, presentation, um, the business logic itself were tightly coupled in a single place, it became extremely difficult to scale, debug, and work on the monorail. This kind of led to the decomposition of the monorail into individual services. Today, Twitter is actually powered by over 1,000 plus services, um, and this particular chart, which is one of my to-go charts, uh, what you're looking at is uh, the, a specific request being served from our reverse proxy called the TFE. And this particular graph shows the create a tweet request. Um, the TFE routes all the requests down to the individual different services. What's interesting about this is, so moving to the microservices enabled us to do the obvious things, right? The assumptions about ownership, um, enabling fault tolerance and graceful degradation as a first class feature for services, teams owning and planning and scaling the individual services. Um, all of this subsequently improved the developer productivity and also enabled us to actually scale up our engineering teams uh, without stepping foot on anyone else. However, what many people don't know and what we have realized over time is that there are certain challenges which are not so obvious. Uh, for instance, the service-oriented architecture did provide us a certain level of comfort around fencing and ownership. However, it is only valid when the organization stays intact. Uh, not many organizations stay that way. There's always constant churn, reorganizations, and many things happening, projects moving from one to B. So many a times what happens is services go unowned, and if not uh, made visible at the right time, there is a significant, there's a significant risk of knowledge being lost and a potential impact both on the business from an operations perspective as well as the efficiency perspective. The second challenge is about managing metadata in general. Uh, our SRE and the ops team really appreciate a single consolidated view of everything that is critical to run the business. This enables them to monitor, detect, manage incidents, and recover effectively. This, however, becomes a challenge when the organization actually grows from a few teams to about 100 plus teams. Thus, there's a need for a centralized uh, service discovery, service directory, and a metadata manage system, management system where you can store important metrics such as tier information, your monitoring dashboards, SLOs, and different queries where uh, many uh, developers from the organization can query and use them. We also ran into one of the biggest problems, that is the ability to identify a service using a canonical identifier. I'm sure many people deploying uh, services onto public clouds or even hybrid strategies will, will be able to appreciate that problem because um, not everyone uses the same name when they're provisioning resources uh, on these public clouds. We didn't have identifier provisioning early on, which led to every service having disparate identities across our infrastructure. Um, usually, organizations can map or consolidate all these identifiers through uh, various programs uh, which will last for a couple of weeks, manual mappings of these IDs together. But unfortunately, this is, this is a significant tax on engineering. Doing these cycles again and again um, um, adds to a lot of manual work, which we wanted to avoid. And the worst part is by the time this manual work is done, there's a very good chance that all of those data you collected and mapped have gone out of date. And finally, the lack of consistent way to provision and manage, and manage resources as well. It is very important to provision resources and tie to individual teams, such that quotas, utilization, uh, utilization metering, managing the various clients all become extremely simple and happen through a single place. Uh, this enables us to do some really fancy things to tell us how much does a service cost to run? Uh, how much does a team X spend on certain infrastructure resources? Kind of moving on, so I think we can consolidate this into two big teams, essentially. So platform operators, at least at Twitter, definitely needed tools to operate and manage their service for their customers. And service owners themselves needed an end-to-end -end lifecycle manager where they can go into a single console, view the projects, and manage them respectively. 
And that led to us building something called the Kite Service Lifecycle Manager. So just quickly wrap this up. Uh, you can argue that we start off with the data center of the public cloud where individual platform teams may run managed solutions or even use solutions which are offered by the public cloud themselves. We build specific provider APIs and adapters to enable these individual services uh, which, uh, which solve the problem of identity management, single place to provision quota, and uh, do utilization metrics, um, and even charge users and teams within the company. All of this coupled with specific service lifecycle workflows which enable them to create, build, deploy their services along with a whole different side of reporting engine which shows how much does it cost to run your service, all happening through a single dashboard. And to just give you a particular example of what this may look like is this is one of the chargeback bills we sent out to our tweet team. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show any of the dollar figures, but really this is the level of detail we can get to. And in fact, this can be drilled down even further to really understand which particular applications, jobs, and other things are running across our infrastructure. Um, on that note, thanks. <laughs>